Hello, my name is Jacob Salmon, and my partner's name is Emily Lackey. Today we're going to be talking to you about the comparison analysis of Shake Shack and Habit restaurants. One interesting fact to note of Shake Shack, it has a 92% institutional ownership. This is quite higher than the average of most companies and corporations such as uh, Habit restaurants that are currently lying at 70%. Vanguard Group is a notable institution in the category of top 10 institutions that they actually are invested in both Shake Shack and Habit restaurants. Vanguard owns about 5% of Shake Shack shares and 6.5% of restaurants for Habit. In addition to Vanguard, these large corporations also invested in Shake Shack and Habit restaurants. These are uh, big corporations such as Stanley Investments, um, BlackRock Institution, Trust Company, as well as a few major banks and other corporations. Comparing the two companies, Habit Restaurant seems to be the safer side when deciding the firm has a reliable ownership percentage. Uh, the 92% institutional ownership of Shake Shack threw up a red flag for us. Habit Restaurant shows a diversified type of ownership and is the ideal formula when it comes to investing. Shake Shack is an interesting firm because it is a fairly new company and didn't release their IPO until the year of 2015. Because Shake Shack is new, current values of the firm are abnormal and those in the similar industries. Shake Shack has a current debt ratio of about 33% and an enterprise value of about a billion dollars. The cost of capital for Shake Shack is at 18% currently. This is a little high, but as mentioned, Shake Shack is still considered a new company. The optimal debt ratio for Shake Shack is about 30% which is not much lower than the actual debt ratio. The weighted average cost of capital, optimal percentage would be about 14%, which is about 4.5% lower than, the stands, than it stands at currently. If Shake Shack can adjust to have its optimal rate, then the total enterprise value would grow substantially to about uh, $1.5 billion. Uh, Habit Restaurant's current debt ratio stands about 68% and has an enterprise value of about $410 million. The weighted average cost of capital is currently at 11%, but the optimal WAC is at 4%. Uh, Habit Restaurants needs a significantly lower its debt ratio about by 60% to a 10% uh, to obtain the optimized firm value of about a billion dollars. As you can see, there's an extreme difference in the current enterprise value versus that that can be obtained by Habit Restaurants. Habit Restaurants currently has a rating of BA2 and Shake Shack has a rating of BA1. This gives the this makes the default spread a 1.625%. The after-tax cost of debt for Habit Restaurants is 11.64% and Shake Shack is 15.28%. In this case, we would choose Habit Restaurants because they have a lower cost of debt financing. Based on the unlevered beta shown in the regression model here, we would choose Shake Shack over Habit Restaurants. The reason we would choose Shake Shack over Habit Restaurants is that Habit Restaurants has a lower beta at 0.77 in comparison to the market beta of 1. Shake Shack with a higher beta at 1.23 shows more risk but will show a higher return in the long run. Shake Shack and Habit Restaurants both have a debt ratio that is currently higher than the optimal percentage, but Shake Shack is only about 3% higher as opposed to Habit's 60% difference. If Shake Shack can obtain an optimal level of operation, this could be good news for shareholders. Optimal share price is about $60, a $20 increase from the current stock price Shake Shack sits at. If you take a look at the uh, Shake Shack's cost of debt, it's about 15.5% as opposed to Habit's 11.64%. Um, Habit is, uh, has a change in optimal enterprise value of about a billion dollars, and Shake Shack has a change in a little less than about half a million. Uh, relying solely on the fact that Habit is more money, has more money to be made, it would be an obvious choice to choose him. But realistically though, Shake Shack would not require a complete restructuring of their financial status like Habit would in the ideal choice, and is it the ideal choice for this situation. So now, does more debt create unnecessary risk? Some of the advantages of creating more debt are tax savings, an increased beta equals increased returns, it increases the firm value, and lastly, it gives the firm more of an incentive to fulfill their debt obligations. Some of the disadvantages include higher risk of default, 
larger mandatory payments of interest, loss of control of assets, and the firms have to increase their cash and collateral that, so that in case they do default, the banks can collect. On to the value of the firms. The current stock price for Shake Shack is $38.21. As we can see through the intrinsic and DCF models, the firm is significantly underpriced at $47.52 as well and $95.49. To get our value of the firm, we took the average of all three of these prices and got an, a value of $60.34. For Habit Restaurants, the current stock price is $8.45. Using the intrinsic value, we saw that the stock was undervalued and it actually valued at $15.50, but using the DCF value, it would be overvalued with the DCS, DCF value at $3.92. We also used the average value for this to get the value of Habit Restaurants so that it had a total value of $9.32. In conclusion, we would advise investors to choose Shake Shack over Habit Restaurants based on capital structure, beta, future growth trends, and valuation models. In each of these categories, Shake Shack significantly outweighed Habit Restaurants and appears to have stronger future growth as well as having an undervalued position in the market. Habit's capital structure worried us because its debt exceeds its ability to provide achievable gains in the future. Thank you.